So the next speaker is uh, Nea Rouch, uh, and she will speak about realizing implicit computational complexity. Hi, everyone. This is going to be a talk where I'm going to present work that I've done with my collaborators, Clement Albert, Thomas Rubiano, and Thomas Saylor. The general idea is around program analysis, but specifically, I'm going to use implicit computational complexity. Um, before I get to uh, talking about what we specifically did, I need to give you some background. So I'm going to start from there. Um, I'm going to start with something called MWP analysis. This is a type of ICC system. So ICC is short for implicit computational complexity. Um, I will give you a very high level idea of how this analysis works. Uh, in the beginning, you need an input program. This would be something with the very simplified syntax, and it's going to be an Im uh, imperative program. Um, then you have something called MWP, MWP calculus, which is a set of inference rules. And this is what you're going to use to analyze that program. Um, for every command in the program, you're going to have a rule, and that rule gives you a matrix. So it's sort of a way of typing your commands with matrices. Um, and then in that matrix, you're going to capture different kinds of flows. Uh, and these represent dependencies between variables. And um, there are different kinds of flows. It can be a zero, which means there's no dependency between the variables. Or you can have, in increasing order, MWP. And P is the strongest dependency that you can have. So, in a way, it's, it's uh, also typing this kind of variable relationship with, with flows. All right. So this is, this is general mechanics of how, how this analysis works. Um, and how we get complexity out of this is saying that if we can have a program and we can type it with this kind of matrix, then we know the following thing. We know that for the variables in the program, the growth of those values is bounded by a polynomial. And that's, that's our base system. Um, I will give you an, a concrete example here. So if I start with the program on the left, you'll notice it has loops uh, and some basic operations in an imperative style. And uh, skipping the intermediate steps, I'm going to end up with the matrix that's on the right. Uh, the fact that I have this matrix result is going to tell me a few things. The fact that I have a matrix in the first place tells me that the growth of uh, input variables x1, x2, x3 is bounded by a polynomial. The other thing I can look at is I can look at the matrix and I can see that, oh, x2 depends more strongly on x1 and x3, whereas the opposite is not true. So I can also get that information from, from the matrix. Um, there are different properties that this analysis have, and I, I will list them here just to give you a general idea of what I'm working with. So. Um, as you saw, there's a multivariate result, so you get this kind of fine-grained information about your complexity. It's language agnostic in the sense that you just need some imperative language and you can analyze it. Um, and I'll say it's an expressive syntax because if you compare to a tape of zeros and ones, this is a more natural way of doing complexity analysis, uh, in my opinion. It's also compositional, and you don't have to worry about the termination of the program. The other thing is, when I showed you there was a loop example, I didn't care how many times that loop iterates. So we can, we can get past all those tricky, tricky problems using this system. Um, the inference rules that I use to type my commands, that's, that's a non-deterministic system. And then the question of, will my program have a matrix? That's an that's a MP-complete problem. Uh, one more note here is I want to say that this is, this is a purely theoretical analysis in a way that you would do with a pen and paper. Uh, most ICC systems have, are, are like that. So um, with, with this background in mind, we knew about this analysis. So we had several open questions about it. Um, one is about the powerfulness of this system, and that's to ask, how many programs can I analyze using this method? Uh, the other question is about the richness. So, uh, by default, it's a very restricted syntax. So the question is, can I extend that syntax to do more things, like arrays or pointers or something like that? Um, another question is about the practicality of this. So can I actually use this to analyze 
like real world programs because most systems are, are theoretical. So that was an interesting question for us. And lastly, you want to think about the utility. So I have this method to analyze complexity. What else can I do with it? And we set out to answer some of these questions. Um, I will highlight here one of our results, which is an extended and improved MWP analysis. Um, and we also made an actual implementation uh, around that. Um, there were many things that we needed to change about the original way that I demonstrated earlier, but just to give you some highlights here, um, we had to change the non-deterministic rules to deterministic rules. Um, this was important because in the original system, uh, if your derivation fails, you have to restart. So with the idea in mind that we want to realize these systems and we want to use these uh, in, the, in the actual tools to analyze programs we needed to solve this problem. So by having deterministic rules, we can always finish the analysis and then there's an internal way to handle the case that the derivation fails. Um, to answer the question about the richness of the syntax, we extended it, so we added support for function calls. You can also do recursion. Um, specifically for making this efficient in a real world use, um, it is, the, the theoretical way of doing it is not efficient, so we actually added this. It's a very cool way, but it separates the, the phases of the computation, so you can ask in a very quick way to say, oh, does my input variable values grow within a polynomial? And that, that's a binary question, so you can ask yes or no. Or you can run it all the way through and then actually compute the value. So those are two separate phases, and they, they greatly improve the efficiency of the analysis. Um, we also have an implementation. It's called PyMWP, and it can analyze the subset of C programming language syntax using this very method that uh, we did, that the improved and extended method. Um, so by doing this, uh, we learn that, yes, you can have powerful tools and you can extend them to be rich and they can be practical. If you would like to see more about exactly what we did, there's a FSCD paper this year. We'll, we'll discuss this in detail. Uh, but then there's, there's also more. So I asked briefly about what, what is the utility of this method and what else we can do with that. And so we're, we're looking at different things to, to do with MWP analysis or other ICC methods. Uh, one of the angles is say, if, if I know dependencies between variables and I know complexity, well, then you can optimize your performance of, of the program. Another angle that is very interesting to us is compilers because um, in the ICC systems you have a simplified syntax so if you have a real world program with a very rich syntax you need something to take it to the more simple uh, terms and that's where compilers uh, come in so we can we can leverage the work that compilers already do to make it easier to analyze programs um, we can also look at different kind of analysis and and uh, we are also very much interested in trying to do a mechanical proof of, of this type of analysis and we can get formally verified complexity analysis. Um, so, sorry, I didn't finish. I was going to say that mo almost all of us are here uh, at type, so if, if you find our complexity analysis inspiring in some way, you can come find us and talk to us about it. You can also find our source code, so all our tools and results are online um, on GitHub. That's it. So we are on time and we have plenty of time for questions. Ah, let's start here. Uh, you didn't get away, uh, give away what's the meaning of M, W, and P, the three values. Okay. Um, M is the, the weakest dependency. It's, it means the maximum of linear. Uh, w is sort of between. It allows you to capture certain programs in this system that you couldn't capture otherwise, and then P is polynomial. And, and they go in that order, so M is the weakest dependency, and then P is the highest. These are just the names of meta variables. Yes. Anyone? Yes. Um, 
Yeah, I was wondering, let's say you have like yeah, two different codes which are equivalent in the sense that they produce like the same output. Can you say something about, let's say, the connection you would see between the matrices? Um, do you mean in a sense that I analyze two different programs and they give me the same matrix? Um, no, not necessarily that, but more like if you have like two, um, just two programs which do the same thing, like two different sorting algorithms or something like that. Okay. Uh, and if you consider their complexity matrices, uh -huh. um, well, is there, can you, in a sense, uh, relate back to the original, uh, or is, is there just any connection between, let's say, um, would it be interesting to consider like just diff different uh, different implementations of the same program and see then their matrices and is there some connection between the matrices? That is an interesting problem. We haven't actually looked at that. We're mostly looking at um, what are the different kinds of programs, not so much comparing different implementation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is it possible to get the degree of the polynomial from the matrix? Is it possible to have a de to get the degree of the oh. polynomial? Yes. Um, so you can you can see a little bit in terms of the types that you get from the matrix. So if you get M's, you know it's a weaker dependency, or a P, it's a higher. Um, so you you have some some of that, but actual type bounds are are not in the scope of this analysis. But there is a there is a published work that takes a very similar syntax and adds type bounds to it. So it's maybe doable. Yeah, so I'd like to know a little bit more about uh, the MWP analysis with respect to how it sits in existing compiler analysis. So in compilers, there are essentially three kinds of uh, data hazards. There's read after write, write after read, and uh, write after write. This is one kind of data hazard, and in terms of memory, there is uh, memory localization, array accesses within a loop. So mm -hmm. if you want to optimize a loop, say, with uh, loop unrolling or loop dialing or something that's usually done in a GPU or an FPGA, you try to remove these dependencies. Mm -hmm. What class of dependencies is really MWP? Let me start with, with, with the fact that um, if you're doing MWP analysis, you don't have to modify anything in, in the program itself or in the loop. That would be a question of more like once we know it, how do we optimize it? And we actually have one result that is kind of in the, in the scope of what you mentioned. Um, trying to think of what I was going to say. Um, the other thing I was going to say that we haven't actually solved yet how to deal with memory which is that this is a hard problem. This is not defined for the MWP analysis at all. Most ICC systems do not touch how to deal with memory. And th this is part of the problem of realizing some of these systems. So we're actually still working on all those aspects, yeah. And one last question. Okay. <laughs> I guess this is linked with your answer. You're saying that your analysis works on a subset of C, but like what kind of subset? Like what? Uh, kind of features you have there? Um, so you can do integers. Um, we can, you can do add, multiply, you can do subtract, which is already more extended than the original analysis. You can do functions, you can do loops, um, you can do assignment, um, I think you can do Boolean. There's, if you go to our GitHub repo, there's a feature chart <laughs> that very nicely color-coded tells you exactly the features, but it's, it's a little bit extended from the original, but it's still very limited um, for, for actual realistic uh, program analysis. Yeah, so if, if you ever seen like the imp language yeah. in, in Cox, so th it's very close. Yeah. Okay, we can thank the speaker again. Okay.